Elway found the need, the need for speed. Hey everybody, welcome to Fast Football Talk. Draft weekend just wrapped up a couple days ago. Hope you all enjoyed your virtual draft as much as I did. Um, I thought it was a great time. thought it was awesome how they handled everything. And it was quite the achievement for the NFL and the sports world with a uh, draft averaging out viewership um, per day greater than that of many of our biggest sports championships in the U.S. every year. So pretty crazy. Um, but we got draft classes to talk about. And of course, on brand, we're going to start with my Denver Broncos and we are doing an entire draft class breakdown. So without any further ado, let's hop into round one and discuss. Taken at number 15 overall, Jerry Judy, wide receiver out of Alabama. Now, let me tell you, this is the incredible pick, my favorite pick of a first round. The, the value at this pick, absolutely incredible. Jerry Judy is my best receiver in the class and he fell all the way down to number 15. Um, we can thank the Raiders for that, uh, for taking Henry Ruggs above him, um, a move I don't understand, but I'll talk about in a separate video. But Jerry Judy, insane value that he got to fall to the Broncos, and he's the perfect pairing across from Cortland Sutton. Um, Cortland Sutton is pretty comparable to CeeDee Lamb, as they both have great ball skills. Um, both can still separate, uh, still fairly fast, but that is their main trait, is going to be those, those pretty elite ball skills. So Jerry Judy really, really is the perfect pairing with Cortland Sutton. He brings that separate skill set that Sutton uh, isn't necessarily the best at to the table. He still has it, but it's not his top skill. Um, so what is Jerry Judy's skill, right? Uh, his best trait is his separation and his route running abilities. Um, they're the best that we've seen coming into the NFL since Amari Cooper. I think that that's what you want in a modern receiver, right? You you want somebody who can run those routes. You want somebody who can gain separation. He sets up defensive backs and he does a phenomenal job at that. He is a, a really great prototypical 2020 number one wide receiver. And I think that he is going to be a surefire number one receiver translation to the NFL. Um, he was already getting separation at the NFL level. Um, and I think that you can consistently see him do that and at the next level still, even against NFL level talent and defensive backs. He really has great stop-start acceleration that allows him to get in and out of those breaks quickly. Um, he leaves defensive backs just speechless and in, in his dust with his acceleration and, and uh, quick stop-and-start ability. It's really something special to watch, the way that this dude sets up defensive backs. You can see it in the tape I'm playing behind. Um, that I'm going to have going on a loop. Um, the way that he just runs his routes, he gives these defensive backs little jabs with his foot and shoulders that can just send them spiraling seven yards off of him. And he instantly gets that seven, 10 yards of separation between him and the DB. This guy just creates immense windows to throw in. And it's going to be a great pairing with Drew Locke to give him those beautiful wide open throwing lanes to throw in. You also see that ability that same ability that helps judy run routes you see it in his run after the catch ability it's the word that came to my mind when i was trying to describe this guy's run after catch ability was slippery again that quick that stop start quickness that immense acceleration ability it's amazing you can you see it in his tape um when he's running after the catch and those incredible incredible jukes that he has He's able just to gain yardage by just outslipping defenders. You'll see five defenders around him, and he's able to, to slip in and out and around them for another 10 yards. It's an incredible quality. Judy has a special, special trait, um, and it, it's insane just how, how good he understands leverage, how, how well he wins before the snap, how he sets up the defender, how he runs his routes, how he has his acceleration to get in and out of breaks, and how he's a weapon after he's already caught the pass to take it to the house every single time he touches the ball. Absolutely insane. Insane that this guy slipped to number 15 overall. He's a top 10, top 8 talent in this class. Um, I think we just saw him slip because of the quarterbacks and tackles. Um, but 
incredible value for the Broncos. Incredible pick by Elway. Um, exactly what you want. He has versatility on the outside or in the slot. He can be moved around. Um, you could scheme him up. Bama used him a lot on these like bubble screen, gimmicky, you know, get get the ball in the hands of your best playmaker um, type plays that they had schemed up for him. And I think that this offense is just going to have an absolute heyday with those. Get the ball in his hands and something good is bound to happen. Great pick. Um, if I'm giving it a grade, it's going to be an A+. Plus. Where KJ Hamler, wide receiver out of Penn State, was the pick with the number 46 overall selection. At first, I was a little underwhelmed by this pick, um, but I have completely changed my tune on it. Um, I thought that that doubling down at right receiver right after we made the pick was a questionable move, um, but I, I've completely changed my tune. Amazing pick. I love this pick. Um, I thought that uh, the reason why I didn't like it at first was because there were still some good zone corners on the board. Uh, Trayvon Diggs, Jalen Johnson, um, that I, I really thought we should go after because it, it's a pretty gaping hole outside of A.J. Boye, who's going to play that outside role. Um, but our next pick in the draft really helped solidify that and uh, helped me come around to this one. Um, and I I love it. I, I really like K.J. Hamler. Um, just from a, a character perspective, um, dude is a total underdog. Uh, he's ready to get in there and work and to fight. I love what he brings to the Broncos. He seems like a guy who is going to be refining his craft for a long, long time. Um, now, Hamler's best ability is his speed, right? He's that, that kind of typical small, speedy uh, receiver mold. Um, and I think that the stereotype with them is that usually they're poor route runners. Um, I think Hamler has a ways to go in his route running, but he is not necessarily the poor route runner that I think I like a Jalen Rager is. Uh, I think Rager has a lot more ways to go than uh, KJ Hamler did as that deep threat. Uh, Hamler uses his quick feet in his routes and he gives him a lot of uh, head nods. Uh, you can see the play I have going in the background against Maryland. Um, he's running that slant route and he just absolutely turns that corner around with his quick feet, um, he gives him kind of a little head nod outside and then insane agility to, to cut back inside. Um, so I think that that's what you're gonna get in his route running from the slot, um, which is where he is gonna be the best weapon. On the outside, he really lacks the physicality that you need. That's no fault to him. It's just his complete body stature. And if he was to build mass, you would lose some of that speed and acceleration that really does make him special. It's just the type of player he is. He's that small, um, that small, speedy, just Sean Jackson mold. You would like to see him get better uh, using his hands. Uh, he does have a lot of body catches. So I think in the NFL, uh, he needs to get a little more aggressive with plucking the ball out of the air. He needs to attack it a little bit more. Um, but that's something I think that is coachable and um, kind of lower on the red flag list. Um, he also lacks the physicality to play outside, like I was discussing earlier. No fault to him. Uh, the kid plays hard. He fights through contact, he fights through tackles, he doesn't shy away from contact because of his small size. He is just limited in the amount of his ball skills on the outside and what he can do uh, playing against more physical uh, press corners. But like I said, absolutely love this pick. Great fit in the slot. Come in, be a day one starter, and this kid is gonna work. Um, and we just keep adding more and more weapons around Drew Locke. Now all of a sudden this offense has two really great uh, speed acceleration threats who are, you know, yards after the catch monsters who can just take any ball they touch to the house. It's, uh, Drew Locke is gonna have a heyday with these guys. It's a great pick. If I had to give this one a grade, I'd give it an A. Moving on to round three, uh, the pick was Michael OJ Mudia, cornerback out of Iowa. Um, and I, really like this pick um i was kind of thinking at first that uh we should have gone with the corner in the second round with trayvon diggs and jalen johnson there um but getting oj moody at 77 overall um great fit for a, a zone corner um he's a really really smart instinctive zone corner out of iowa oj moody is a great athletic fit in fangio scheme he's a good length uh he's six foot one 200 pounds 
He has those long 32 inch arms um, and he has 445 speed and good acceleration. I think that you see it on tape. Um, and I think also on the tape, you see good, not great agility, um, which is why I've come to like this pick more than some others. Um, I think that a lot of those other, you know, cover three zone corners in this class are, are long, stiff corners with more so vertical movement abilities, not really lateral movement abilities. Um, I saw OJ Mudia having more lateral movement abilities than some of those other guys. Um, they're not fantastic, but I think that he's not just a guy that you want covering only deep routes, you know, those vertical routes. I think that you can have him moving across the field a little bit, covering crossers and, and stuff like that. So good, not great agility, but it's better than some of the other guys like Trayvon Diggs, Jalen Johnson, who can be kind of limited by their athleticism. OJ Moody is a very, very instinctive corner. That's what I saw from him. I think that he's going to come in here and be a really good pick. I think that he'll probably be an instant smarter starter on the outside just because he's has a high football IQ, smart player, um, and he's very instinctual in coverage. He knows how to read a quarterback and how to make a break on the ball. He's also not afraid to come downhill and tackle. There's tons of plays of him being super physical in the run game, getting off of blocks, coming downhill and tackling the running back who caught the check down on the edge or something like that. Um, so, of course, Fangio is going to love that. He loves those good, hard-nosed tackling defenders in his defense. So, great pick in the third round. You pretty much got a, a plug-and-play cornerback, too. Um, and I think that it, it's going to be a really sneaky good pick. I think that he's one of the most starter-ready cornerbacks in this class maybe lacking a bit on the upside for the future but i think that he's going to be a really sneaky pick as one of the best corners in this draft class for the next year i really like the oj mudia pick in the third round and if i had to give this one a grade i would give it an a the second pick in the third round number 83 overall broncos drafted center out of lsu lloyd cushionberry i thought that this was a really good pick in the third round um, we got a cheap instant replacement for McGovern, um, who they let walk in free agency. I think that was the right move. Uh, you didn't overpay him like the Jets did. McGovern's just a guy at the center position. And I think you bring in Lloyd Cushenberry, who can be a very similar average, just a guy at the center position. Uh, he also has guard versatility, which is nice. Um, if they decide that they want to play Glasgow at center, they can and move Cushenberry to guard. Um, however, it does sound like Glasgow is going to play guard. Uh, so Cushenberry, it could very well be that plug and play starter for center. Uh, he has good length, plays with really good power. Um, he's a solid gap blocking uh, run defender. I think he's going to struggle to move up to the next level and really, you know, move into the linebackers and, and move upfield, you know, maybe that seven, 10 yards you're asking him to. But if you're just asking him to stay near the line of skim scrimmage and um, open up a hole for the running back, that's where he's at his best. And you see it on tape. They're not asking him to move up very much. He's just that really good zone gap run blocker. I also really like the Lloyd Cushenberry pick. If I had to give this one a grade, I'd probably give it an A-. minus. I think he's one of the best centers in this class. And to get him in the third round is good value. And he'll be a starter, not necessarily the future maybe, um, but a good floor starter. With the final pick in the third round, the Broncos took interior defensive lineman McTelvin Ajim out of Arkansas. And I get where they were going with this pick. I see the need for use on the interior line, um, but this guy is a project interior lineman. Uh, he played edge in college. He did play some interior, um, but he needs to have some time to learn how to transition into a three technique player. Uh, and I think normally this might give him some versatility in a larger 4-3 front, um, but not in Denver. Uh, he just does not have the physical profile at all to play edge here. He's only an interior guy, um, so he might take some time to kind of adjust to that interior. Uh, but what you see on tape from him, really, really incredible quick first step that allows him to shoot through gaps off the snap. Um, he's really, really fast. And you see on the tape, you just can bust through that line. Uh, it's pretty incredible. But I don't really 
get this pick. Out of all the picks, this one's my least favorite. We drafted Draymond Jones in the third round last year to kind of be the similar player, the project pass rush, pass rush specialist on the interior. And I get that Ajim has better size. Draymond's about 20 pounds lighter. Um, so I think that you're hoping Ajim turns into a bit of a better run defender too, who can get off blocks, while as you don't really expect that ever to develop for Draymond. Um, I still don't necessarily get the pick. Um, you know, project, interior, pass rusher. I just think that you took one at the same spot last year. So I don't get the need for it. Um, my least favorite pick in the draft. If I had to give it a grade, it would probably be a C- minus for this one. Under round four, the Broncos took Albert Okwegbunam, tight end out of Missouri. I thought this was really good value for this pick. Uh, we didn't reach. I thought this was about the spot he'd go, kind of early fourth round, middle fourth round. Um, and the Broncos do have a really crowded tight end room right now, but I, I get the idea where they were going with this pick. Um, I think he, he's going to be the second tight end behind Noah Fant and be that Jake Butt, Jeff Hireman replacement. Unfortunately, Jake Butt's dealt with a lot of injuries in his career. I don't know how much longer he can go on playing football. Uh, otherwise, I thought that we would have been set for that backup role behind Noah Fant. Uh, it's just unfortunate. And then Jeff Hireman's a guy who's been with the Broncos for a long time. He still has a lot to contribute, um, but he gets hurt fairly often. And he was drafted a couple of years ago with fairly high expectations that he just never lived up to. Um, so I think he could be a good third tight end here. Um, but you bring in Van Nett as that blocking specialist. I think that his days are numbered with Albert Okwegbunam, uh, you know, ready to take over his role. Um, Hyman's kind of that uh, that possession tight end, kind of a, a flexible guy. He can block, he can make those possession catches, and that's what I see Albert uh, Albert O as. We'll call him that for the rest of this video. Um, he put up athletic numbers at the combine for his size, um, but I think that he's you see that speed really when he's only moving in a straight line downfield. Um, I think that you don't necessarily see it in his lateral game. Uh, I think you can kind of see that in the tape that I have rolling in the background. He runs a little out route um, and you don't necessarily see the speed or acceleration on that. But when he's moving downfield, once the ball's in his hands and he's just running in a straight line, I, that's when you see the speed and acceleration come out. I think that his best uh, ability as a receiver is his ball tracking ability and his ball skills. Um, he really does have great ball skills and he can go up over defenders to go get them. Um, not a refined route runner at all. Like I was saying to the tape behind you, you see on that out route, um, he kind of just, you know, bodies the DB out of the way. Same with the other deep post route that he was running, kind of just bodies the DB out of the way. He's not going to beat you on his routes. Um, so that's kind of why I see him as that possession mold receiver. Um, and he's going to contribute as a blocker as well. He's a good run blocker, you know, good pass blocker. So again, that number two well-balanced tight end replacement for Hireman that I think uh, is what I think Albert O can be. Um, so I do really like this pick. Uh, not to mention that he was Drew Locke's favorite weapon at Mizzou. That does have to contribute something to this selection. You know, I think Elway's been making it pretty clear that uh, they're making Locke as comfortable as possible. So. Um, I think they're giving him his binky back, you know, giving him his baby blanket. So I do like this pick. If I had to grade it, probably be a B. Uh, I get the knee and I get where they're going and I get making Locke as comfortable as possible. Moving on to the fifth round, the Broncos selected Justin Strenad, linebacker out of Wake Forest. Um, I see Justin Strenad as a high upside athletic linebacker. Um, he's going to infuse some speed and some range into a linebacker room that is really missing that ability. Uh, pretty much every linebacker in there right now, uh, Alexander Johnson, uh, Josie Jewell, and Todd Davis, uh, they're kind of these big, bigger bodied linebackers who are a little athletic, um, but they're, they're mainly run stuffing guys who can cover underneath in zones, and they don't really have that sideline to sideline range. I think that's what Justin brings to the table. Um, he flies around on tape. He has incredibly fluid hips. Um, great sideline to sideline range. You see him tracking ball carriers down in the open. Um, and he's, I think he is a good tackler. Um, so his length gives him a lot of coverage upside. You know, if he develops, uh, he can be a guy that you can match up on 
tight ends and running backs out of the backfield. So he does have that, that really nice man coverage sideline to sideline upside. Um, but currently at the moment, I think that he's a underneath the zone defender. Um, he'll have to work on that coverage ability a little bit. And Justin's biggest weakness, like so many of these rangy sideline to sideline linebackers, is that he can get lost sometimes out there if he gets blocked. Uh, you know, he can get blocked out of plays and he can struggle to get off blocks. So if a team throws a center or a moving guard towards him, uh, he can really struggle to get off that and make a play on the running back or receiver or tight end, whoever's coming uh, out, in, out in the open. Um, but I do like this pick. I really like the upside here, and I like where they're going by giving this linebacker room a skill that it currently doesn't possess. Uh, if I had to give this one a grade, I'd give it a B plus, A minus, I would think. Moving on to round six, Broncos selected Nitain Moody guard out of Fresno State. Um, great pick. <laughs> I really, really like this pick. Um, Nitain Moody fell in the draft because of his injury concerns. He does have really serious injury concerns that have kept him out for multiple seasons in during college. Um, but this guy has incredible upside. Uh, he has the ability to become one of the best interior linemen in this class. He has incredible upper body strength. You saw that by his uh, combine bench press performance. Um, he also, he played tackle at college. He's going to move inside to a guard at NFL level. He just doesn't have the arm length to play tackle. But I, I think that that does maybe contribute to something. If there is ever an emergency where you have one or two of your tackles go down, I think you can put Moody out there and he'd be a little more comfortable, even though he wouldn't be good at it. I think that that does um, impact it just a little bit. But, you know, he is going to be a guard. Um... He does have those even short arms for a guard, but he's incredibly aggressive off the snap. He he wants to get his hands into the defensive lineman as quick as possible, and he plays with really, really good power. Um, he's a good pass protector against power moves. Um, however, at the next level, he is going to have to improve his agility um, to be more than a mauler in the run and pass game if he wants to you know, fare against some of those more uh, undersized finesse uh, interior rushers that we're starting to see more and more of. I think this is a great shot at a high upside guard at the end of the sixth round. Not taking a big uh, risk on this pick, and if it works out, you have the ability to get a very good, very strong guard who could be very slept on in this class due to his injury concern. And Broncos selected Tyree Cleveland, wide receiver out of Florida. This is a, a very high upside shot at a depth receiver. Um, I think you're mainly getting him for special teams value. He played Gunner at Florida, um, but he didn't have much production outside of that. He only, you know, caught 20 balls a season when he was playing with Florida. Um, but he is high upside because he has the ideal height, weight, speed uh, ratio that you want from a receiver. Um, but he doesn't have the production. He has a lot of holes in his game, too. He's incredibly raw in terms of route running and his physicality against defenders. He doesn't have the best ball skills and he doesn't have the best route running ability or separation ability. So I think he's pretty much just a, a depth guy here, maybe a camp body um, to add some special team value to this team. Um, so if I had to give this pick a grade, I'd say a C. Um, I think he's a very realistic cut candidate from this class. And with the final pick in round seven, the Broncos select uh, edge out of North Dakota State, Derek Tuska. This is going to add a lot of depth to our pass rush room. I think the pass rush room right now kind of lacks that clear number three pass rusher. You have Jeremiah Tachu in there. You have Justin Hollins, who they drafted last year out of Oregon. You have Malik Reed. So you have kind of a lot of bodies in there. Um, but I don't think any of them have really separated themselves as the number three pass rusher. Uh, you bring in Derek Tuska, add another guy into the mix to see if he can do that. Um, he was very, very productive in college. He had 13 and a half sacks in 2019. Um, this was against uh, poor you know, opponent talent. He was going up against poor tackles and a pretty poor conference. Um, but it is what you like to see out of those guys who come out of, out of weak conferences. You want to see them dominate, and that's what he did. He dominated in his conference, 
Um, so I, I feel a lot more comfortable taking somebody who dominated in a lower conference than somebody who has all the, you know, physical skills, but didn't, but couldn't even put up the production in a lower conference. So I do like this pick. It's one pick before Mr. Irrelevant. So you take a swing. If you miss, you're not missing out on much. Um, he plays with good technique, but I think he needs to improve, improve his play strength for his size. Uh, he needs to get a bit more physical at the NFL level. Um, but I think that that's something that can come naturally and should be easier for him to get a hold of. So overall, I do like this pick. Like I said, it's a late seventh round shot. So why not take a shot at a guy who is super productive in college at a low, at a, you know, like a low level conference. Um, so if I had to give this pick a grade, I would give it a B plus, A minus as just a high upside shot on another edge rusher. If I had to give this class a final grade, I'd go with an A minus. I think that's pretty top heavy. A lot of the, you know, the best picks came in the first few rounds. Um, but I did like some of the shots that Elway took in the later couple rounds. So I think that you can add this draft class to um, a really a great list of last year's two draft classes that are going to give the Broncos some very, very nice youth pieces for a long time. I think you can see the core of this team is now fully in place. I think the Broncos could push for a wild card spot in the AFC West next year. And I cannot be more thrilled to say that. If you like this content, please consider liking and subscribing, as well as giving your feedback below in the comments section. I will have a lot more draft content coming out this week, so do be looking forward to those. Thank you guys for watching and enjoying the content. Peace.